unpaid care work has achieved, has uh, attracted a lot of attention over the years. Uh, it's been very much part of the feminist movement arguments for increasing services for women, increasing uh, you know leisure opportunities for women, increasing you know, women's well-being overall. But this argument has often rested very much in documents, in, uh, you know, in, uh, in sort of planning documents of the government as well. But in reality, it hasn't really translated very much into real services and opportunities for women. We've had uh, in India a long history of uh, providing for child development through care services, but this has often been uh, for children aged three and above. There's been very little targeting children under three. There's also been um, a, some provision of maternity benefit, but it's been largely for women in the organized sector. Now, the organized sector in India accounts for a very small proportion of women workers. So the rest of the women workers are sort of left without any form of protection or guarantees uh, or entitlements. Um, the third issue has been really that most of these entitlements have, have been targeted at women workers, not at um, any worker who has a family who has children so it's been very sort of gender biased in its orientation in that it's been only targeted women workers and most of the time the assumption has been in all of these policies that women are willing carers are the most able carers and therefore should be uh, pay, paying or playing this role of unpaid care work the UN special uh, rapporteur on extreme poverty and human rights uh, this is this report is uh, amazing actually for us because it's the first time that you have an international document that has really put together all the different aspects of the case that exists for attention to unpaid care work. It looks at the arguments from women's perspectives, from the perspective of those who need to be cared for. It looks at the argument uh, from the perspective of the need for gender transformation in terms of looking at what men contribute to. And so it's a fundamentally a book, uh, a report that makes the case for structural transformation. And it also has very strong policy recommendations. So it combines both a strong conceptual argument as well as a very strong set of practical um, uh, arguments or practical recommendations for governments to take forward. So from that point of view, I think it's a very useful document. Uh, it, there isn't anything like it really uh, up to now. So in terms of advocacy, it's, it's brevity, it's also its positioning as a UN report. All of these make it a very valuable contribution to the work on unpaid care work in at least in, in India, I would say we will use it a lot. The link between women's uh, rights and child uh, and the child rights is that women need access to childcare services so that they the, dis the burden that they have are bearing currently for childcare, which is a very time consuming and a kind of continuous uh, commitment and responsibility, as well as uh, the the rights of children to have quality childcare. Both of these have to be kept in the frame together. We cannot talk about women's right to childcare services if we don't focus on the quality of those childcare services. And the, the, the childcare services are able to replicate that full nurturing role that is required for children to also thrive and to uh, grow and develop uh, to their full potential. So the child, uh, children's rights to care and women's rights to access to care services um, and the shared responsibility for care uh, are both hand in hand. I don't think you can separate the, the two issues at all. You know, there are different stakeholders who have a role to play in this. I would start with donor agencies, for example. I think they have a large role to play in, in emphasizing this issue, making a par it part of their agreements with governments, making it a part of their fundamental programming. Uh, and I think that's something that isn't quite happening. I think that sort of systematic attention to unpaid care work, because it, to me, under, 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 unpaid care work underpins everything. It underpins you know, the structure of the economy, it underpins the structure of the family, it uh, underpins every social institution and therefore there needs to be a sort of very significant unpacking of uh, care work issues uh, across domains and donors have a very significant role to play in making sure this is a part of every uh, kind of policy framework. Having said that, I think then governments in turn have also got a role to play in, in terms of taking this seriously and this really forms part of an overall commitment to women's empowerment um, and gender equality and I think that's something that again, uh, you know, we have to look at how governments are actually un uh, understanding these issues of gender equality and women's empowerment and what it takes. Very often uh, it is um, co correlated with women's economic participation uh, and women's participation in different forums but if women cannot participate because of their time poverty then you, you really can't move on empowerment and I think making that link very clear to governments I think is, is an important uh, role 
for academics, for civil society organizations to come up with that evidence, to, to make the case, to hold governments accountable, um, and to actually also integrating it into their uh, advocacy for women's uh, rights and uh, women's empowerment. So I think everybody, I think we all have a role to play in, in um, making the case for this and then also may operationalizing and then monitoring and holding accountable the actors who have to, to do this.